All right, what's up, legends? I hope you hear me fine and well. Welcome back to another Come Draw With Me session. I'm your host, Stefan Kunz. There's no one else in the office today but me. So I uh, hope you're okay with me just standing here in front of your screens. But I hope that you brought your pen and paper. Maybe I should have done this the other way around. Your pen, pens, and your paper, and that we're gonna have a great, fantastic time together um, doing this live stream. I'm really excited about that, and I hope that you are too. And what we're doing today is 3D letters. 3D letters is really what the hype is all about. Um, everyone's doing it, your mom's probably doing it. Um, maybe that's not a great example, sorry for that, but, um, I love 3D letters. I've been drawing some 3D stuff for a really long time. I, I explain that in my workshops. I'm preparing my workshops actually at the moment, the Procreate Bootcamp. It's really fun. It's so much fun to actually prepare all that. But what we're doing is 3D letters, how to create beautiful 3D type. And there are just two really cool ways to do that. And of course there are more than just two ways, but we usually use only two maybe even just one way in lettering. So today, this is it, this is what we're doing, and I'm really excited about that, and I hope that you are too. I realized this is the light that was causing by this microphone, the shadow coming in. So I hope that you're ready. We're gonna jump into it. We got 44 people already streaming live. This is amazing. If you're re-watching this, then I hope that you're welcome too, that you just get your pen and paper and just sit down with me. There's no music, so maybe you have to play some music in the background, maybe with one ear, and we should get started. Oh man, somebody gave me $2. How amazing. We got Pterodacto giving me $2. Thank you so much. and. Today, um, Laura on my Patreon, shout out to Laura, she gave me a awesome suggestion and asked me about why do we have to sketch? And so this is a little answer about how, why we have to sketch. So let's look into that. So top down, here we go. So you can still see me there. So the reason why we sketch so much is because sketching is 80% of the work. Now. You might have heard of the Pareto Principle. So it's the 80-20 rule. So if you spend 20% of your time, 20-80 rule. So if you spend 20% of your time, you should get 80% of the result and it will take you 80% of the time to get the final 20. So this is why sketching is in 20% of the time, you'll get 80% of the result. 80% of your work is based on your sketch. And this is because a sketch will take you only minutes to do, but this is why it's so important to spend so much time on sketching and making it work really, really well. Um, so Laura asked me this question, and this is why sketching, you, you are so much faster in sketching. So because Laura asked this great question, and she's one of my Patreons, if you aren't already, you can just support me with $1. And it's not more about supporting me, but it's also giving you access to everything that happens to me or around me, like what happens in the studio, like not the filtered version that I present you guys, but the version that my assistant Judith is showing you guys. So I'm gonna use Laura to, the name Laura, to use as an example today for this demonstration. So. I'm gonna do a slanted version, so sketching it out. And usually, sketching would always go a little bit smaller. Um, I know kind of already what I want. I want it to be cursive. Um, and, and so I kind of like space it out like this. You see, the strokes should all be very light when you're sketching and should really be just fast and, and lights and just should go easy from the hand. Like you shouldn't be, be concentrating too much on it. And so that's why I'm just like doing it light. Maybe I'm doing here. No, I'm not liking this so much. I'll probably be pushing this up here and then maybe just around here. All right, that looks already really cool. I kind of like that. Um, I can, again, improve a little bit. Like here, the distance between these two bits is not the my favorite right now. 
And so this is a light sketch, a light draft. So I kind of know where the skeleton of the letters goes and where I want to put now the weights. Um, usually I love to do some heavy weights on the top. I want to do a monoline lettering around this. So now again, still very light. It should only give me a sense of what it should be like. So checking this out here, kind of like this, right? And then going down all the way. Perfect. Now, if you're at home, if you're at home watching this uh, or at work, if you're still at work, I don't know about you guys, a lot of my friends um, have to had to leave work because of the virus. And we're in Switzerland, right next to Italy. It's kind of it's kind of dangerous, isn't it? Uh, let me just check on those comments here because wow, people are in here. David, awesome. Um, here we go. Maybe going a little bit closer. Adding this here. But yeah, I hope you guys are not freaking out about this virus. I'm definitely am not. There are just some restrictions on traveling, but I didn't have any plans on traveling, so I'm, I'm happy. I hope you guys didn't have to and didn't have to rearrange. Also, there was a lot of fuss about toilet paper being really scarce. And again, I just went to the shopping, uh, to the shop right next door, and they still have plenty of toilet paper. So I, I should be good. And even if you don't have any toilet paper, hopefully you have a shower right next to you. And this got really out of hand right now, super fast. Okay, so again, sketching, it's all about being fast, doing fast strokes, not spending too much time. And now maybe, maybe I wanna intersect these letters here like this. This L is getting out of hand, absolutely out of hand. Um, but I kind of like this. All right, now that this is a light sketch, now we're already kind of like a step ahead. We're, it's not so light anymore, but it's still, it's still not the final version, you know what I mean? So right now I can really start to put a little bit more pressure because I kind of know now where the line should be going through. And so that will help me to finalize where the thing is. So if you're doing 3D letters, like the, one of the first things you need to do is to really finish your lettering. It doesn't matter if you're doing it digitally or not, especially if you're doing it digitally, you wanna have the first layer, the base layer, the finalized version of your lettering done before you move on. And here, this is kind of where I go, try to, Increase those strokes, right? And I try to keep those lines pretty much the same way. If you haven't see, realized it yet by now, I haven't used the eraser just till this moment. And this is really important when you're sketching because you don't want to be using the, the eraser most anytime. I have it here, but I rarely use it anyways. So stick with that. Now, I'm going on here with the A. And you'll see me jumping through different parts of the letters as I go on. So as I told you just before, like one of my favorite things as a kid was to draw inside houses, like how houses looked like. And it's really fun to, to kind of move on, like to use those in letters and I really started to struggle when it started to become like how the shadow would hit another surface. Like the ground is easy, you can figure that out, but everything else, that is a lot harder. So this somehow needs to be a little bit further. All right, this is looking really good. I'm happy. And it's good that I'm happy it's always good to be happy with what you're drawing and i hope that laura is going to be really excited about this hopefully laura is even on the live stream i don't know but that would be amazing we got 89 people watching right now i think this is my record if we get 100 we get to celebrate 
Um, so invite your friends, start watching. Um, I'm really excited, guys. Hope that you are having the time of your life. We should do this more often. The reason why I'm doing a live stream actually is because I was, I didn't actually commit to doing a video this week and I said like, I want to be uploading a video every single week, every Thursday. So if you haven't already started subscribing to this channel, this might be your time. And the cool thing about doing these come draw with me, it's actually, we're both getting actually productive. We're both doing something. And so sometimes these live videos help me even more to get something done and to have fun with you guys to create something, to play, and to make something cool. All right, what do you guys think? Does this look awesome or does this look really awesome? The only thing that I could think of that could be improved is kind of like maybe this stroke be a little bit more round, um, but for the intended purposes, pumped. So this is the initial sketch. This is the finalized sketch and draft for the first version. And now I'm just gonna test to see if that works on the camera because I usually do it differently. So let's see. Yep. You, it's not tracing paper, so this is why you can barely see it. I'm gonna try to see if, if what happens if I'm using a, a black pen, if you guys can see it better under the camera. Maybe I can even use this pen here to do it a little bit faster. But if I do it faster, it's not gonna be as good. Ooh, we got 95 guys, 95. Oh, again, I should not worry about numbers or commit to numbers, but 95 guys, this is awesome. Oh, you guys are amazing. And actually, I don't know what you guys are drawing. That would be awesome to see. You guys should tag me in your pictures. Let me know what you're drawing right now the stages that you're drawing in it at, and I hope that you're creating, that you're not just consuming. Um, little fun story about me, let's see if that works. Yeah, you kind of can see that better. Um, but I'm, I'm moving a little bit too fast with this pen, so I'm, I'm switching back to this other pen. As you can see, I don't have the necessarily the, the smoothest hand, and a lot of people sometimes feel like you do, but you don't. It's kind of annoying. People give me excuses about, I cannot draw because I don't have a hand that is very smooth. Get over it. Tough love, guys, tough love. All right, here, gonna move on a little bit further. Now usually I would move the paper around because it's kind of easier, like if I do this, it's easier to do these strokes than if I just keep the paper straight. But for Instagram purposes, usually I just don't. Um, you kind of want to keep your piece of paper, your canvas always in the same position. Because you know, you're recording something and you want to, you don't want to mess with the vision, how like people see it. But again, that's to record awesome stuff. Um, what else did I want to talk about? Yeah, so this week I started fasting Netflix and all TV shows. I don't know if you guys have ever done that. Um, if you have ever stopped watching TV shows and man, Honestly, I was scared. I don't know if you guys have ever done that. Um, I remember sometimes when I had to do it, like um, I had to fast because like, well, I had to fast. I didn't get allowance. Like I think one of the last times was, actually the last time that I didn't, that I quit Netflix was two years ago. I was in Australia, I was in a rut. I wasn't creating, I wasn't productive, I just wanted to sleep and to not do anything. I don't know if you ever have that. 
I have that sometimes. And um, it really sucks. Okay. So step one, create your lettering, finish it off, and make it amazing. Second step, get another piece of paper, maybe one that's not like all smushed like I did because I had like warm hands on the piece of paper. Um, but here, I'm just gonna jump over and I'm gonna place it. I'm gonna try to center it a little bit higher up and then I'm gonna redraw all these lines with the pencil. Again, if you did it at home, you might not have to do that. And so, again, about the fasting, I, I was afraid actually to, to stop watching movies because I was like, what, do I, what else do I do? And, and there's a certain, certain fear that arises in me about not being able to kind of like, what do I do? Like one of the things that I struggle probably with the most is being bored. And I hate being bored. I really do. Um, and it's a sickness, honestly. It's, it's terrible. Like, we should be bored. We should have times where we don't know what to do, where we're, like, lost, where we just are playing with our thumbs and not doing anything. And, and with entertainment right at your fingertips, it's really annoying. And so, yeah, being bored. Okay, we're getting there. So this is really how to do 3D lettering the easy way. And I'll show you in a second why this is so easy on paper. Why this method here makes it so much easier. And man, do I hope that Laura's gonna be pumped about this because I am pumped and I I really care about my Patreons. Those people are awesome, asking great questions. We're having cool stuff that we're posting there. We're posting like new YouTube videos there before anyone else and um, getting you guys exclusive access. Okay, now I have to move a little bit around. <laughs> now I'm moving around not because of Instagram, but kind of because of the paper. I don't want to be moving the paper that's underneath it. That could mess everything else up. Okay, something here is not right. And I just have to fix that a little bit. Okay, that looks all right. And then Let me know in the comments what you guys are writing. If you're writing the same thing, if you're writing someone else's name, so maybe somebody you'll like. Ooh, that could be fun. Um, okay, so I got this ready. Now, the trick is, maybe you can see this, is to move it around and to just place it somewhere. So I just moved it around and almost like this here. I'm just gonna place it almost to this angle and I feel like that is where I want it to be cool so now I can see those lines here and those are the lines that I need and I'm just gonna draw some lines here not all the lines making sure that I get those right here And then some here, this here. And there's this one type of 3D, and I'm gonna explain how this works in a second. Well, more like a minute, but give me a second. Um, so right there, now I'm gonna 
connect these parts and here this is going to connect like this and it's basically going to have the same angle every single time which is kind of the simplified 3d version that you can do There's a little piece that I missed, and one here, and then just this part there, and this here. I think I got it all. Oh, no. See, this is kind of the difficulty in doing 3D is not to miss anything. So this is going up here. This is kind of like doing that. Yeah, that looks about right. Awesome. Okay. There we go. This is the 3D lettering that we're doing, the simplified version. So let me explain how that works. Now, most cases, we have a 3D element. So this is a square. The square, if you do add 3D, there are two types that we usually use in lettering. Number one, maybe you know it, simplified version. I said it before. So it's a square that you just offset, but it's gonna not, it's not gonna change sizes. So you're just gonna move this square further down and kind of keep the same size. So it will have the same angles everywhere, like this angle here, it's gonna always be the same. So no matter how much you have, so meaning if you have an E, you're gonna draw the same angle here everywhere could be another direction could be a different angle if you want to and then you're gonna offset these here perpendicular meaning it's just gonna move the same way straight down so you can make it like cut right here you can cut it down here and then easiest way so now you see like I might have made this a little bit shorter so I'm just gonna cut this off a little bit before these will have the same angle again as well and so on and here and this again perpendicular to this so that's what's happening and then you can kind of like color these in here and this is how you're doing the 3d in the easiest possible way this is why we did this with the piece of paper over here where we kind of took this as the background. This is our drawing, this is our square that we use in here. And then we put it in the background and we redrew the same thing, just only a few other elements. So we kind of only drew these lines in the background and we connected all the corners in the background. So this is what we basically did in the fastest way possible um, when you're drawing on paper, which probably is what we use most of us um, in the general term. Now, if you're doing this on the iPad, you can just duplicate the layer, move it down, and then fill it out or connect the corners, fill it out, easy peasy, nothing really um, takes too much time there. Now, what I wanna do is I wanna color in just the 3D for this one. And so we're just gonna start up here and we're gonna fill this out. And because I have a brush here, it's super easy to do that. Like it takes so much less time to do. If you want to elevate your game, get a lighter brush and then color that one in so you can still draw shadows. I won't be able to do that with this one here, but we'll do something else. It's going to be fun too. Ooh, Now, I hope this, this little trick blew your mind. And if it didn't, well, maybe wait till you see the next trick. I don't know. You might know this already. But there's also another way of doing 3D, which we'll look in a moment. But first, let's finish this here. The simplified version, this one will be 
awesome and done. Like that. If you have questions, let me know in the comments on the other side. I'll have a look in a second and so I can see if I can answer all your questions regarding 3D and everything else. see if we have any questions <laughs> my little guy is running for paper right now Heidi I'm super excited Laura my flower amazing so dope baby robot I draw on my app iPad Ruthie I'm super excited you're drawing on your iPad you are probably making more progress than we are doing right now but that's okay this year is absolutely relaxing and if you are not drawing yet if you're still just watching get a piece of paper we have time we have so much time we only spend like a half an hour drawing right now and i hope that you guys are learning something new that you're pumped about this and even better sharing about it as well now i'm also excited to say that have you guys heard about the secret project that we're doing right now? We have something amazing happening right now. The secret project, a really fun group on Facebook as well. Maybe you can find it if you search it on Facebook. But it's a fun group that we're spending some time with. And there's something new coming. Ian and I have been working on. We have now testers, our astronauts that are helping us out. And it's really cool. Instead of filling the gaps out, can I create a contrast of colors? Absolutely. Um, you can color in the Laura you, or the, the text, the layer, letter, lettering, layers. Um, you can do however you want. Don't, don't just copy me. Just create your own stuff. Create what you love to do and have fun with it. That's the idea. That's what I want you guys to have is to have fun with drawing this
All right, this is so much fun, you guys. You have no idea. I'm enjoying this. Hopefully, as much as you guys are as well. Boom, that looks already really cool. Um, and then finally. The last part. Also, let me know in the comments what is the thing that you're struggling with most when it comes to 3D lettering? Like why, what is the problem, the issue that you're having? Is there anything that you feel afraid of? Is it something maybe that you feel like, oh, this is super easy, I can do that. Maybe it's the imagination of like, how to imagine like coming up with things. Like I struggled this week a lot with casting shadows. I told you this before at the beginning. Um, Casting shadows is super difficult and complicated, but you know what? It's getting easier every single time. All right, all right. So this is it. Boom. So now we have our first piece of lettering done here. Um, let's see this how it looks. Let me get my camera here in front. Laura, hey. Maybe go this way. If you're watching, I don't know, maybe not. Um, I'll definitely send you a picture or even get that to you by mail. Uh, you're one of my Patreons, so of course, we're gonna make you feel welcome and appreciated as much as we possibly can. Now, of course, I don't wanna leave it there. I just wanna take it to the next level. So let's see how we can do that with one more little thing, one more tiny little detail. Because one of my things that I always talk about is, whew, maybe you know it, adding one more step, always. Adding one more step. Um, drunk on 3D lettering, David Samuel. Well, I'm not drunk on 3D lettering, but I'm, I'm drinking this coconut water. Which is really good.
Some people left. They thought maybe we're done, but we're not. It's a secret. We're keep. We're still going on, and those who are still here, they know it. So, again, we're trying to. This is where we were before. So I'm just trying to, to see where it was. If you're not sure, like get an iPad or a light, um, light source. Here, I think this is it. Now we moved it down this way. So this is kind of the direction we went down is that way, right? Now what we want to do is going this way for the shadows. The reason why is if we just go again, it will look like we're just prolonging the 3D. And that's not what we want to do. We want to add some shadows. We want to cast, have the whole piece of lettering cast shadows. And to do that, we're just going to move it this way around. So take your piece of paper and we're not going to take the piece of paper below. We're just going to take the piece of paper on the top and we're going to move it pretty much. We're not going to try to move it too much in this, like shift it. Um, so I'm trying to be as mindful of that as I possibly can. There we go. I think this might be the best. Okay. I'm having a hard time seeing all the pieces, um, but I see something here. This is kind of what will cast a shadow from there. And so this is the angle that we're aiming for. So trying to keep that same angle here, here, and this will kind of like go back there. Um, there will be some shadow, I think, right down here. There's no, no shadows on this side, but on this side here. And yeah, kind of like there. And definitely, because it's going down here, it's definitely going to have some shadows back here. But I just barely can see. Huh. Maybe not. Maybe I'm mistaken. Maybe I am mistaken. Maybe there is no shadow here. That's a trick, guys. It's always hard to see where it really lands. Um, okay. I feel like, oh yeah, all this part down here is also going to be shadowy. And the same angle here. Perfect. And then, ah, oh, yeah, totally. Miss this part here. Anything else, guys? Missing anything? Who knows? Um, oh yeah, this one. Ha, thank you guys. That was helpful. Let's see. If I move that away, I think we got it all. Now, I'm just gonna erase all the rest. The parts that I don't need anymore. So kind of like, it's only gonna have some shadows in here and I'm gonna use the pencil to to draw that in and I'm trying to keep the same direction of the shadow right there The reason why I keep it, try to keep it in this direction is because it just, it will look smoother in by the end.
maybe there is some shadows back here. But I feel like we got it. We got it. Let me see. What do you guys think? Why not using your iPad to add some light sources under the paper? Well, that's actually what I would usually do is using my iPad to kind of like play that up. But since a lot of you guys maybe not have an iPad, I thought not showing that or not using the iPad to do that. It's kind of like a trick. The rest of it you could do is kind of like hide again those lines, maybe erase some of the pencil. I'm just going to erase lightly because I might want to use it later still, but... It's like an ASMR video. This is what I like to hear, guys. This is amazing. Thank you. Uh, let's see. I definitely enjoy this here. And I'm just going to add some sharper lines because why not? But yeah, definitely a lot easier to do on the iPad. Um, but this is a lot of fun. So the only letter that I have a hard time really reading is the R and kind of like missing this piece on top. It could be an N, it could be something else, I don't know. Um, but so far, so good. So this is one version of doing the uh, 3D. Now we had this before, so this was number one. Number two, and I'm not gonna take this video too much longer because we all gotta go somewhere at some point. Bad joke is, is it too early to say, like, is it a bad joke that, like, maybe you don't have anywhere to go because you're in quarantine? I'm sorry. I, I probably, that's inappropriate. If that wasn't appropriate, if you are in quarantine in Italy, maybe, then I'm sorry. Because I don't know, maybe we'll be ha we have to be there soon as well. I told my, my, my workers, my employees, if they are in quarantine, we're going to the office and we're staying here and we're gonna create awesome stuff. We're gonna create and inspire you guys along as well. Um, so we have Nicole asking about why do I use eraser to erase the other lines is because the goal was here to have the shadow kind of like show that it's actually some, that there is a layer onto it, like that's hiding it. Otherwise it would kind of like go in. So that's kind of like taking it out. The best, coolest way would be to even add another color in the background, like have a lighter blue or um, I don't know, maybe something else. You choose. It's your drawing. This is my drawing. You do your drawing and we're making something amazing. Don't forget, share that on Instagram. Let me know how you're doing and how this is playing out. Um, and here again, number two, what is number two? One point perspective which means you have a horizon line somewhere. Let's say the horizon line is maybe on this line here. Like it's straight, it's an object. And your one point here, that's your perspective point. It's one point and then every line will converge there. So back here, this would go back here and straight lines. If you're having trouble drawing straight lines, use your pencil here, put it there and then make sure that it goes all the way there. Perfect. Now the object will still move perpendicular because if I'm standing right here and I'm looking this way out, the object will be in the same position. Like it will not be at an angle um, because then we'll change how we draw perspective. So in this case here, we have one point, it's gonna move perpendicular to the object. So I'm choosing to cut it here and so in the back, it will probably be doing this because it's all these lines will move a little bit further back. This is the problem is that the object here is getting smaller. Now, if you're drawing an E again, we have the E over here. I'm drawing a terrible E, but it works. I'm putting the one point here. I don't have to draw the horizon line if I don't want to, but all my lines will converge to this point. So 
I'm going to have all these corners go in one direction. Now you'll see some of my pieces use this method, some of them don't. And again, the same thing happens here. The lines will stay perpendicular. This will be a little bit further in and like this. So now that I have drawn it fully, I can use this black pen to mark the final drawing. And so that's really all it takes is just drawing one single dot and then converging all the lines to it. Now, how do you do that on paper? Like on the iPad, it's easy. You just du duplicate that layer. You make it smaller, you make it smaller, and then you drag it to the right side. Here on paper, it's not like I showed you before where you use your one side. That's not the right paper. Um, there you go. It's not like you use this here, this drawing, and then just scale it down. You cannot do that as easy. But what you can do is say, for example, in this here, it's maybe far out, but what I would do is maybe say, you know what, let's get this dot down here outside of the piece of paper, and then we'll get a ruler like this here, and then we'll start converging all of these edges like that. And maybe you can find one of my Instagram posts where I actually did that, um, where I use this converging point. But you definitely see a lot less people using this, this method um, opposite to the simplified the one angle perspective because it's just easier usually lettering wouldn't be so tall so big and if you're like even mixing your photography uh, your photography or photography with lettering then yeah this will be a lot harder and especially now because they those elements are round it's harder to kind of like get those right angles like these angles will probably still be be right there but well, they would still be there, but they would be smaller. It would be a little bit trickier to get those right. Um, to get that distance always right because the higher up, the longer the distance will be and so forth and so on. And this makes it so much more difficult. On a smaller scale, for example, where I would probably use it is, um, let's use another example over here like this. I have used it where I use like, maybe have something, some lettering in here, like for example, a uh, three letter word, uh, three letter quote, um, make something awesome, or to create something today, create something today. So you have create over here, create, and then we'll have like something today five letter word now the point the one point perspective is will be here in the center and it will connect all of these elements so that will look kind of like Star Wars where it like goes from here um, if you're looking here the point of perspective like the horizon line will be at the camera level if it's straight and then we'll look down here so here we go we're connecting all these elements. And this is kind of how it will work in 3D. And we'll connect these as well. So if now if I made these bigger like this, it will connect all of these. This is why sketching is so important. Back to the question that Laura asked, why is sketching so important is if I want to draw something in 3D, like maybe add a ribbon, in here, this would be a great place to put it. Um, you've seen me do a lot of these on on uh, on Instagram, like post these. I love to do some ribbon work there and then create those in here. 
And so that kind of hides like all these converging points into one piece. So I can hide that in the background. Um, so you probably wouldn't see that because kind of like this will connect down here again. And these elements here would connect all together like that. Does that make sense? I hope it does. I, I think it does. Again, to go back to the example, two main perspectives. So if you wanna recap the whole thing, if you wanna, like if you're jumping to the end of the video, that's totally fine. I hope you did the work you did. You create a piece over here like this. This is the piece that we made together, the Laura, um, using this piece of paper. So recapping first, create a sketch, draw it really fast and easy. You see the sketch that I drew took me about like the first couple of minutes to do. We finalized this piece here. That took me a longer time to do. And then we started drawing this piece here. The initial sketch is still more or less 80% of the work that I've done over here. So this is why sketching is so important. And then to make the 3D effect, we use just this layer here, this basic uh, grid or this, this drawing, the lettering, the finalized lettering, and we place it once to draw out the outlines. We moved it a little bit this way to, to draw the next um, the, the, the extrusion of the letters and then went the other direction. So again, we, we did down here and then down here because what we did was to create, like we drew the first lines over here. Oh, this is what we did. I didn't show you that. First down to the right. You can go any other way. You can do this as well and then go over here, whatever you want to do. And so we did that to be able to do that, connect all the lines here. Uh, you don't have to finish that line. This would be kind of like more if it was floating. And then finally we added, we went the other way again down. And so we kind of like moved on here and then created the shadow. Does that make sense? I hope it does. And I hope you had a great time. Thank you guys so much for watching. Um, I hope you're having a fantastic week so far. Uh, it's been an incredible week for me. We are still working on the course on Procreate Bootcamp. We're doing a ultimate lettering workshop at the beginning of, um, when is it? April, April 4th, we're having a workshop here in Zurich. Uh, we're gonna have the next day, the lettering, the first lettering bootcamp, uh, iPad bootcamp, Procreate. Man, I'm having trouble with her. We're gonna have the first Procreate lettering bootcamp. There, I got it. We're gonna do this here in this office studio space. So if you've ever, like if you're in Europe, if you wanna spend like a weekend here in beautiful Zurich, it's gonna be uh, spring already. It's gonna be beautiful outside. You're gonna love it. Um, there's so much to do. If you want some ideas what you can do in here, we'll definitely wanna help you as well. And um, it would be lovely to see you here, to spend some time with you and to make something awesome happen. And again, thank you so much for watching. If you are want more exclusive access to what's happening behind the scenes here in the office, check out the Patreon page, you'll see. There's already a couple of posts up there, uh, more to come. Um, yeah, so much amazing people enjoying here. Marta, Osman, it ended already, Maria. Thank you guys so much for watching. Um, and yeah, definitely pumped to see what's coming up next. And uh, see you on Instagram, see you on Facebook, see you wherever you are. Shoot me a message, send me what you want to see next in another Come Draw With Me and what I can do better. There's always room for improvement. Don't forget to leave a like if you haven't already. And man, I just appreciate you guys spending some time with me here, quality time. Thank you guys so much and I hope to see you next week again. All right, bye.